Starship Flight 10 made history, but it also exposed one of SpaceX's biggest headaches, the heat shield. Thousands of tiles survived re-entry, but gaps, burns, and even orange scars revealed just how tough this challenge really is. Now Elon Musk's team has unveiled a radical new solution, one so clever it could shock even NASA engineers. If SpaceX pulls this off, Starship might finally achieve what no spacecraft in history has ever done, a truly reusable orbital heat shield. Let's dive into what went wrong on Flight 10, the genius fix SpaceX is testing, and why it could change the future of human spaceflight forever. On August 26th, SpaceX's Starship soared into the skies for its 10th flight overall, and the fourth using its second version, drawing cheers from the crowd. This launch carried a lot of weight for SpaceX. After three consecutive setbacks, the company needed to prove that Starship could fly without ending in another fiery explosion. The stakes were high, not just the confidence of NASA and SpaceX investors, but also the looming deadline to transition to version 3. That next version will be critical, as it's designed to test key systems for NASA's Artemis 3 mission. Most importantly, in-orbit refueling. SpaceX has set its sights on carrying out the first-ever orbital refueling demo in 2026. If successful, this milestone would open the door for Artemis 3 in mid-2027 marking humanity's return to the moon. But getting Flight 10 right wasn't easy. Engineers had to tackle stubborn issues with the rocket's propulsion and propellant systems that had doomed earlier tests. Beyond that, they were eager to gather new insights into the Starship's heat shield, a complex skin of thousands of protective tiles that must survive the blazing heat of atmospheric re-entry. Each piece of data brings SpaceX closer to unlocking Starship's true potential. The outcome brought a huge sigh of relief for everyone. At last, the fourth attempt proved to be the charm. Both stages not only endured their grueling journey, but also guided themselves to a controlled splashdown. Still, the ship didn't come back without some battle scars. There was noticeable damage on its rear end and flaps, and most strikingly, a rusty orange streak running down the side of the 171-foot-tall, 52-meter vehicle. This discoloration came from the oxidation of metallic heat shield tiles, which had been installed to test their toughness and performance against the ship's usual ceramic tiles. Prior to launch, engineers had placed three of these metal tiles on Starship's side for the experiment. This isn't the first time metallic heat shields have entered the conversation in rocketry. Back in the 1970s, NASA was already pioneering this idea, running extensive lab tests to explore its potential. The goal was to build shields that were lighter and tougher than the traditional ablative or ceramic designs. While the program succeeded in reducing weight and optimizing materials, metallic shields never made it to flight largely due to the technical and operational hurdles of that era. Fast forward decades later, SpaceX picked up the torch. As early as late 2018 and early 2019, the company began experimenting with metallic heat shield concepts for Starship. Bringing the old idea back into play with a fresh vision, they believed that the metal tiles would be easier to produce and more durable than ceramic ones. But by mid-2019, SpaceX had shifted its main focus toward ceramic heat shield tiles, while still keeping metallic versions on the table for possible future use. At present, the concept was revived as seen in Flight 10, but the results weren't great. That's exactly what Bill Gerstenmaier, SpaceX's Vice President of Build and Flight Reliability explained on September 8th at the American Astronautical Society's Glenn Space Technology Symposium in Cleveland. With a touch of humor, he said, they oxidized extremely nice in the high oxygen environment. So that nice orange color, kind of like a space shuttle external tank color, maybe paying homage to the shuttle program, was created by those three little metal tiles up on top. 
Fortunately, nearly all of the 18,000 hexagonal tiles, most of them being the standard ceramic ones, stayed firmly in place from launch all the way to landing. That's a massive step forward for SpaceX compared to earlier flights. But the system isn't perfect just yet. Gerstenmeier pointed out, in most of the tiles, there are fairly large gaps, and that's where we're seeing the heat get through and get underneath. The results were visible. Near the top of Starship, a white patch appeared, caused by heat slipping through the gaps between tiles. This intense heat burned away a protective underlayer, the same kind used on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. The white material seen afterward was the charred residue of that layer. On top of that, engineers had deliberately removed some tiles near the nose to test how the ship would hold up against the brutal re-entry heat. Engineers spotted more white patches lower on the vehicle as well, showing that heat had slipped beneath tiles in other areas too. This highlighted the need for SpaceX to refine how it seals the gaps between tiles to better keep the heat out. That's where a new technique came into play. The Crunch Wrap, an experimental material SpaceX's ground team installed around and under the tiles. You can see it in action as a few darker spots within the white patch near the top of the ship. Gerstenmeier broke it down as if explaining to a 10th grader. Think of the Crunch Wrap like a special wrapping paper that goes around each tile before a robot snaps them into place. Once the tile is pushed in, the wrapping sits snugly around its sides, and the excess is trimmed off at the surface. The result is a tight seal that blocks heat from sneaking through, without relying on the usual gap fillers. From past experience, NASA learned that gap fillers on the Space Shuttle added extra complexity and sometimes even popped out during flight. These fillers were small pieces of strong ceramic silica fiber placed between the thermal protection tiles to close narrow gaps and block heat from seeping through. While they did help make the heat shield more uniform and provided added protection during re-entry, they weren't without issues. Occasionally, the fillers would protrude or become dislodged due to vibrations or adhesive failures. When that happened, they disrupted airflow, creating turbulence that increased surface heating on the shuttle. In some cases, this extra heating damaged the orbiter and posed safety risks, which forced NASA to consider in-flight repairs or even removing the fillers altogether. Learning from this history, SpaceX is taking a different approach. They plan to test the crunch wrap system on the upcoming Starship Flight 11, aiming to improve the seal between tiles and boost the heat shield's performance. It's part of their ongoing effort to make Starship's thermal protection system both more reliable and more reusable. Flight 11 will mark the final mission for the current version 2 of Starship, with plans to follow a familiar suborbital trajectory similar to earlier tests. The next flight could happen in October, setting the stage for the debut of an upgraded Starship slash Super Heavy rocket next year. Gerstenmeier said, I think this next flight we won't push quite so many different techniques in, he said. We're going to try to go more towards the configuration we want to go fly next year. At the top of SpaceX's priorities is ensuring Starship's heat shield can survive re-entry in pristine condition. Success here would directly support Elon Musk's goal, seeing the upgraded Starship reach orbit by next year and showcasing the full reusability of both the Super Heavy booster and its upper stage. In an interview with the All In podcast, Musk admitted that for full reusability of the ship, there's still a lot of work that remains on the heat shield. No one has ever built a fully reusable orbital heat shield before. For example, the Space Shuttle's shield required nine months of repair after every single mission. Musk emphasized that this is fundamentally a materials science and engineering problem. It requires going back to the basics, understanding the core physics, and working from first principles to figure out how to design a system that can truly withstand the brutal conditions of re-entry, flight after flight. You know, it can withstand the heat, it's very light, it doesn't transmit the heat to the, the primary, yeah. primary structure. 
Um, and uh, but then whose integrity is intact? Old tiles stay on and they don't crack. Yeah. Um, uh, and then as you ascend, if you hit some rain, you know, the, the tiles don't dissolve in rain. There's there's a lot of different issues, and and then you really need to know that these tiles are working. You you can't uh, you know go through this laborious inspection. So it really needs to be we're you know these these tens of thousands of tiles all work and don't need to be refurbished or checked one by one. That was the case with the shuttle. For Starship version three, Musk emphasized. Uh, and then thereafter, it's it's version three, which is a gigantic upgrade because that's got Raptor three, um, and pretty much everything changes on the rocket with version three. Um, so version three, you know, might have some initial teething pains because uh, it's such a radical redesign, uh, but uh, it's it's capable of over a hundred tons to orbit, fully reusable. One of the biggest upgrades in version 3 is the brand new third generation Raptor 3 engines, bringing raw power that blows past the earlier versions. So, what makes Raptor 3 such a game changer? Simplicity. SpaceX scrapped the bulky external heat shield. No more clunky armor protecting it during re entry. Instead, the engines are cooled by circulating cold methane through internal channels. Elon called it flaming plasma that burns off any leaks safely. On top of that, SpaceX is using cutting-edge 3D metal printing to make the engines lighter, stronger, and cheaper. Word is, each engine costs about $500,000 to build, which is mind-blowing considering its power. Stack 33 of these Raptor 3s on Starship's Super Heavy Booster, and you get a jaw-dropping 9,000 tons of thrust, enough to hurl 100 tons of cargo into orbit this engine is the key to making Starship operate like a true space airliner. Land, refuel, and launch again within hours. The Super Heavy Booster is also getting a major upgrade with redesigned grid fins, bigger, stronger, and fewer in number. Instead of four square fins, the new version will feature three octagon-shaped ones. And the size difference is dramatic. They're 50% larger than before. Elon Musk even joked they look like a gigantic waffle. The bigger fins will give the booster much more control during flight and landing, making up for the reduced count. To handle the added stress, the structure has been heavily reinforced, now weighing in at around three tons. But the added mass isn't just from size, it's also because these fins will now double as part of the rocket's catching system. Alongside the fins, other structural and aerodynamic tweaks are being introduced to boost to durability, streamline refurbishment, and improve performance. This includes redesigned clamp and hold-down systems to ensure precise launch alignment. All of these changes represent a bold redesign, pushing Starship closer to becoming a fully reusable, high-capacity launch system, ready to take on humanity's most ambitious missions in space.